Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's me coming back at you again with another vid. Um, I guess some of you are not aware of this news. Um, actually, I got this from this. I uh, got this from Boxing Beats of Ryan. Shout out to him, by the way. Um, just got the word that uh, Gennady Golovkin and the Danny Jacobs fight has no rematch clause um, inserted. So, you know, a lot of guys are going to wonder what, what the hell is going on here. Why is it there in rematch clause um, inserted into this uh, particular fight? Um, we don't know why, but here's the thing about this. So a lot of people are going to say this is crazy. You know, why is not you know, this is, this is insane. But the thing is here is that Danny Jacobs is the, um, Danny Jacobs is the mandatory challenger, right? So typically a mandatory fight there aren't any rematch clauses in certain uh inserted into rem uh, in mandatory fights however there can be some exceptions though for example tyson fury and uh vladimir klitschko uh leading up to their first fight tyson fury was the mandatory challenger he was not a voluntary defense but however after he beat klitschko there was a rematch clause inserted into their con you know into their uh contract of the fight that if he had if uh, Fury had won the fight, he would have to grant a Vladimir an immediate rematch. So that was the stipulation that um, was inserted into their contract, which raised some eyebrows because as a mandatory challenger, you're not obligated to any type of rematch clause involved. So that's kind of unusual for that to go down. And I also think this also happened with the uh, Ricardo Lopez and Rosendo Alvarez fight that took place um, uh, many years ago. I could be wrong about that because that fight ended a controversy where the first fight between the two where it ended in a technical draw because of a, a clash of heads and uh, uh, the fight had to be stopped due to a severe cut. I think it was Alvarez who, who suffered the cut and it was so bad that they had to stop the fight. However, they scored the fight a uh, technical draw because one judge had it for Alvarez, the other judge had it for Lopez, and one judge had it for uh had it a draw so split decision technical draw well split uh split technical draw <laughs> or split decisions whatever you want to call it but or a technical draw so that's um and then there was a media rematch between the two where alvarez won the fight and he outpointed i'm not alvarez i mean lopez outpointed alvarez to win the rematch so um, I think that was a mandatory situation when there was an exception that was made that the rematch had to be taking place between the two. So I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Um, please let me know in the comment section about that. But anyhow, uh, I'm looking at this article here because I'm trying to figure out, well, who was the one that requested, which party requested no rematch clause to be involved here? Was it Jacobs's party or was it Tom Loughner and K2's party? So I'm looking at the article here. Um, that was written by uh, John Denon of um, Boxing News Online. It says here, quote, um, from Tom Loeffner, uh, Golovkin's promoter. He said here, quote, look, there is no rematch clause in this fight. This is all for the marbles. There is no rematch clause for this fight. This is all for the marbles. It's all nothing. This is the definition of two gladiators getting into the ring. He continued by saying that when you have two fighters entering the ring with 35 uh, consecutive knockouts together on their resumes, that's a huge statement of their punching power. Now, Golovkin, on the other hand, gave no indication that he was concerned, even though Jacobs might be the most difficult challenger he's ever faced. The Kazakh um, fighter called Jacobs the best opponent he could have. He said, her, quote, I respect. It's huge, huge, huge chance for me, for us, for everybody. I believe Daniel is... Daniel, he is ready for the fight, for this fight. So, you know, Gennady, Gennady has a, a professional gesture there. You know, you can always respect him for that. He's always goes into fight with professionalism, with the highest regards for his opponents. Um, that's one That's one of the few th good things you can say about him. I mean, yeah, he's just, a, you know, the guy, guy is a good man. You know, he's a, you know, likable guy per, on a, you know, from a, you know, personal perspective, of course. Obviously, the ridicule he gets is due to his manager. But anyway... As I was saying, I'm sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> um, I believe that based off the language in this article here on um, Boxing News Online, um, it appears that K2, and I could be wrong here because I'm trying to figure out, um, you know, if who's who, which party was responsible for not getting that rematch clause uh, inserted in there. And it appears it looked like it's K2 who didn't want the rematch clause. 
Now, to me, I don't know why. Then, then again, um, like I said, this is a mandatory defense, and, and mandatory, you typically don't have any rematch clauses inserted into mandatory fights. So that's the norm. On the other hand, if you look at it, what if Golovkin does lose his titles? What if he does lose his championships to Jacobs? Because what happens is in that situation, if Jacobs does win, even though I don't see him winning the fight, I, 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 hate, I favor Golovkin to win this fight. So if he does win, that means Jacobs is not only the champion, he gets to negotiate terms. He doesn't have to give Golovkin a rematch. And if K2 wants to rematch with Jacobs, they're going to have to spend a shitload of dollars, a lot more than what they have to do now to get this fight to be get this fight made to get a Jacobs rematch. If it were to go down, this is only hypothetical. So um, the question is, is that did K2 make a mistake by not adding a rematch clause into the uh, into the contract between um, their party versus Danny Jacobs party? Or do you think this is, um, you know, this is the right thing for them to do? They like, you know what, they, to me, I look at it this way. I think they believe this is a foregone conclusion. But then again, this isn't, they don't want to make that same mistake like they did with Kell Brook when they got out of that fight with one piece. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm out.